Okay. Good evening to uh, all of you, uh, to all participants, and uh, welcome to my presentation. Tonight we will talk about cervical cancer HPV induced. Uh, so the reason why I decided to to uh, present this uh, very interesting topic is because uh, as a clinical histopathologist and cytopathologist, uh, I encountered uh, with a lot of uh, women, a lot of female patients in my everyday work. So I think it will be uh, interesting uh, for all of us to uh, recapitulate and uh, to, uh, to again, to remember to some important things about uh, HPV virus and about uh, cervical cancer. Uh, so let's start. Uh, cervical cancer is the second most common cancer uh, in a women and uh, uh, is considered a preventable pre disease because it has a long pre invasive state, screening programs available, and the treatment of pre invasive lesions uh, is effective. It affects around half a million women uh, and each year kills over. 280,000 worldwide. So the most important factor uh, in the development of cervical cancer is infection with oncogenic human papilloma viruses, uh, of which are the most common HPV genotypes 16 and 18, and the long-term infections with these genotypes can cause precancerous changes and cervical cancer and less often vaginal cancer, cancer of external genitalia, buttocks, and oropharynx or pharynx in both sexes. So approximately 80% of cervical cancer incurs in development, uh, developing countries. So the main risk uh, for this, uh, for the formation of cervical cancer in women who is infected with HPV are uh, the presence of the infection and HPV genotype 16, 18, 45, and 56 in high grade lesions and also for the invasive cancer. So, uh, genotype uh, 31, 33, 35, 51, and 52 in the intermediate grade, cervical interneoplasia 2 and 3, and HPV type 6, 11, 40, 41, and 43 in low grade lesions like as condyloma and cervical intraepithelial neoplasia 1. So other less important risk factors, uh, which are associated with higher likelihood of presence uh, HPV infection and thus with a high risk of cervical cancer uh, in an infected women are smoking, multiple births, long-term use of contraceptives, H, uh, HIV infection, co-infection with APV and uh, chlamydia trachomatis, immune system, uh, increased lifetime number of sexual partners, early age of first intercourse, early age at first full-term pregnancy, so also low socioeconomic status. Uh, so now uh, a little bit about basic structures of the HPV uh, virus. So this is a, uh, consists of small viral particles uh, that uh, consist, constitute viral capsid and encoded by L1 and L2 genes. Uh, it measures about 55 nanometers in diameter and includes a circular episomal uh, genome, uh, highly twisted. Uh, so the genome consists from this early region genes, uh, A2 till uh, uh, e A, the late region L1 and L2, uh, URRC, or a uh, low control uh, region. So HPV types are differentiated uh, in um, HPV genotypes based on distinct variation in their nucleic acid sequences. So a certain stretch within the L1 gene is used as a reference to differentiate types according and international agreement on the classification of uh, HPV uh, virus types. So uh, here is uh, one. Uh, uh, table which shows correlation between a phylogenetic, um, sorry, phylogenetic and uh, epidemiological classification of uh, uh, HPV types. And here we can see this high correlation between this phylogenetic and epidemiological classification between high risk and low risk HPV types. But also there is some uh, individual, um, uh, individual, uh, let's say, a Chain individual um, 
between a, a low risk of 75, which can be found also in a high grade lesions, and uh, a low risk uh, 70, uh, which can be found also in a uh, high in a low grade lesions. Uh, so uh, here on this photo, we can see different types of HPV infections. So acute uh, infections with a low risk HPV types uh, cause uh, actually more proliferation of infected basal cells, uh, which will be clinically manifested as um, uh, uh, condyloma or uh, warts. And uh, uh, acute proliferation, uh, acute infection uh, with uh, uh, high risk HPV types uh, will cause proliferation of basal cells to a lesser extent. So, uh, no exophytic changes without exophytic changes. Uh, and these infections uh, can manifest totally clinically unrecognizable and can also spontaneously uh, regress. Uh, so, after uh, an acute infection and after incub incubation, a cellular immune response uh, first appears against these uh, viral proteins. And after um, a, a few months, maybe six months, a humoral immune response appears. And because of these uh, immune responses, uh, these lesions can, in 90, more than 90% of these lesions uh, can regress, spontaneously regress and as I said, can be clinically unrecognized and uh, less of 10% can um, manifest as a, a preneoplastic lesions and in the end as a cervical carcinomas. Uh, here we can see these different phases of uh, HPV, of uh, high risk HPV infection. Uh, so uh, this is um, after, the in after infection of basal cells of the epithelium, the virus may, may persist in a latent phase. Here we can see in a latent phase. Uh, so upon differentiation and maturation of the cells, the viral genome may be replicated and novel virus particles are produced and released at the surface of the epithelium. And this stage is often characterized by the presence of uh, coilocytes, which are morphological hallmark of productive infection. Uh, this replicative and productive infection. So, if transcriptional uh, control of the viral genome in the basal and parabasal cells fails, uh, expression of the viral oncogenes uh, in these replicated cells uh, may lead, uh, may induce a chromosomal instability and thus initiate transformation, malignant transformation of the cells. Later in the progression uh, to invasive cancer, uh, the viral genome uh, becomes incorporated in the genome of the host cells, and uh, which is actually a sign of increasing uh, chromosomal uh, instability. Uh, we can see here. So this is a schematic and molecular, uh, actually, um, molecular interactions between viral proteins E6 and E7, which are crucial. Uh, for uh, uh, for a manifestation of cervical carcinoma and the pre-invasive lesions and uh, uh, cellular inhibitory proteins uh, P53 and uh, PRB. Uh, after infection of the basal cells, uh, virus uh, HPV genome uh, is in basal cells uh, is located in the basal cells uh, in a uh, form of extra chromosomal particles, uh, we call that episomes. Uh, these uh, cells will, uh, infected cells will uh, follow the uh, cell cycle of the whole cell. And after, uh, in this stage, uh, in this stage, the early viral gen, genes will express in a low and a highly controlled level. Uh, so, when these cells will reach uh, the superficial cells layer, these early genes will shut off and the expression of uh, late gene uh, like L1 and L2 will occur, which will result with the uh, uh, release viron, vir virons uh, from the host cells, uh, which we can see. And this is 
actually uh, happens in a low risk uh, uh, HPV infection and uh, uh, clinically is manifested as a genital warts and uh, condylomata. But in case of a persistent infection with a high risk HPV genotypes, these genotypes like HPV 16 and 18, they show tendency to incorporate into the genome of the whole cell, uh, which we see here. And uh, genome, the biogenome always incorporate um, uh, in E2 region and cause the destruction of the E2 gene. Uh, which uh, manifestate uh, with the loss of its regulation and uh, loss of its regulation, which is inhibited uh, inhibition of transcription of the early genes, which will manifestate uh, with accumulation of proteins uh, E6 and E7, uh, inactivation of P53 and PRB, and uh, uh, with the uh, proliferation of the epithelial cells, which will lead eventually to the malignant uh, transformation. Uh, here we can also see uh, that um, viral proteins E6 uh, uh, is bind actually to a three-part complex with P53 and ubiquitin, which cause proteolysis of uh, P53. Uh, we know that P53 is, a cause, uh, is known as the guardian of our genome. Uh, so in this case, we have proteolysis of P53 and the uh, uh, viral protein E7 will bind to uh, tumor suppressor gene PRB uh, and uh, ubiquitin and will cause proteolysis or uh, PRB. And also will uh, disconnect it, uh, uh, the complex, uh, disconnect the complex between E to F, which will lead also to loss of its function and to proliferation of the epithelial cells at in the end to um, malignant transformation. Uh, here, uh, a little bit about anatomy of uh, genital organs. Uh, here we see uh, uterine genital organs, and here is the cervix, which is the uh, uh, lowest part of the uterus, and it's about two to three centimeter long, and uh, it has roughly uh, cylindrical uh, shape. So this uh, portion, which is this lower portion of the cervix, actually which opens in the vagina, is called as a porcio vaginalis or as ectocervix. So uh, here in the middle is a very narrow uh, cervical canal. Here we see cervical canal, which is lined, we can see here, which is lined with a single layer of columnar cells. And uh, here is the active cervix or this porcio vaginalis, which is lined uh, with a, a, a multi layered squamous epithelia. Uh, so uh, this native squamous cell junction is the meeting, actually, is meeting point of these two epithelia, is called native. Squamocell, squamocolumnar junction. Uh, here we can see on this photo a transformation zone. Uh, this is area of endocervical mucosa where metaplastic process occurs and a new squamocell junction is formed. And why is this junction uh, is important? Transformation zone is important because it is the place uh, in, on the cervix where atypical cells uh, develop most uh, commonly. So uh, here, uh, why this scheme is important because knowledge of uh, and recognition of normal cells in histology and cytology slides is actually essential in the diagnostic process. So here we have some epithelial cells which uh, constitutes uh, squamous uh, epithelia. Also, here is a cytology composition uh, that we are usually usually deal with in our cytological slides. So uh, here is uh, superficial cells, uh, which are um, in histological section showing fully mature squamous epithelium, which uh, with surface of superficial cells here. And this is cytological slides of superficial cells, uh, which are large polygonal uh, cells with eosinophilic or uh, this greenish blue cytoplasm, which are less mature and with a round and pycnotic nuclei. Uh, so here are uh, some photo of intermediate power basal, intermediate 
parabasal and uh, cells, and also histological section that showing intermedial cells that are connected with the intercellular bridges and uh, a region of fully mature uh, squamous epithelia with hyperchromatic nuclei. Uh, so here we have also uh, columnar cells uh, of the endocervix and endometrial cells. Here is columnar cells. This is that how uh, they are seen on cytological slides, and this is how uh, we have uh, histological um, also histological uh, section that showing endocervical canal lined by columnar cells with a basally located nuclei. Here we have endometrial cells. They can be found also in loose groups with intact cytoplasm. And here is a cytologic, uh, histologically section of secretory endometrium with intracytoplasmic uh, vacualization. Uh, so uh, sometimes in our everyday practice is uh, more um, easier if we compare with some everyday structures. So these cells, um, uh, these columnar and the cervical cells, they are very similar to this honeycomb. And here, these endometrial cells, which are uh, very similar to uh, raspberry. Uh, so uh, here is a scheme, uh, some a scheme that how we compare to compare some uh, different uh, classifications, uh, schemas of squamous intraepithelial lesion. Uh, so we have this double uh, HO classification, a uh, Papa Nicolau classification, and the Bethesda system classification. Uh, now. Uh, it all these classification they are used in everyday practice worldwide. Uh, so um, uh, I was following uh, WHO classification. So here uh, we can see this uh, low uh, squamous intraepithelial lesion, uh, which is uh, histologically demonstrates this mild dysplasia or cervical intraepithelial neoplasia with the coilocytes in the upper third of the epithelium. Uh, so here is uh, also cytologically uh, sheets of intermediate uh, cells uh, with anisocaryosis, coilocytes. Here we can see the coilocytes with sharply delineated uh, hollows. This is hollows, perinuclear hollows, uh, and with a dense rim of cytoplasm, and uh, they can occur singly in a cytological samples. So this is also low seal uh, in cytological samples and uh, uh, because most common in the low squamous intraepithelial neoplasia, uh, we uh, see a lot of, of these coilocytes uh, in with the show, as I said, this cytoplasmic, distinct cytoplasmic clearing, as we can see here. Uh, so sometimes uh, we refer to this as a, like viral loop appearance, and also we can see this nuclear enlargement with slightly increased nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio, the coarsely granulated chromatin, also and uh, is eventually which is eventually distributed uh, to the nucleus. Uh, so uh, one, as I said, one of the hallmark of the low. Uh, squamous intraepithelial dysplasia or mild dysplasia or cervical intraepithelial neoplasia is this coilocytes. What actually are coilocytes? Coilocytes are the sign of productive infection. Uh, so, uh, due to this multiplication of HPV uh, in definitely differentiated epithelial cells, this change uh, begin gradually to deteriorate these epithelial cells and this cytopathic effect characterize of uh, HPV, uh, uh, this characterized as coilocytosis. Uh, as I said, it's the sign of productive infection, and these are here the coilocytes. Uh, here we have uh, moderate dysplasia or a high squamous intraepithelial lesion. So uh, it is characterized in the upper layers of coilocytic atypia in the upper layers and uh, uh, proliferation of atypical uh, cells up to uh, two thirds of the epithelium. Uh, cytologically, uh, we can we see the sheets of these plastic cells also with large nuclei and moderate amount of cytoplasm, and also nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio is higher 
than uh, cells than in cells observed in a low squamous intraepithelial lesia. Here is also moderate dysplasia in histological section. Uh, you can see here uh, immature appearing cells in the low two thirds of the epithelium, associating with some maturation. Uh, in the upper one third of epithelium, and also in cytological slides, uh, this immature cell seen in the atrophic sample demonstrates this nuclear pleomorphism, hyperchromatic nuclei, uh, high uh, nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio, and uh, differential diagnostic in this case is very important because uh, it is atrophy. Always we have to think about the possibility of atrophic sample. Uh, but uh, uh, it is a justifying diagnosis as a typical squamous cell uh, uh, ha, ha, high seal. Uh, also, high seal uh, on cytological uh, uh, samples, uh, they appear, the squamous cell appear in syncytial group of abnormal cells showing anisocariosis and hyperchromasia. So, nucleus size is also larger than observed. In uh, low seal, and also sometimes we can see this cytoplasm keratinization and coilocytic changes uh, can also be observed even in a high uh, seal. So this is histological uh, photo that's showing abnormal cells within uh, lar with large hyperchromatic nuclei uh, throughout the full thickness of the epithelium. Here we can see. Uh, and here is uh, one normal uh, epithelia, so uh, it is good to compare. Uh, so high grade squamous infertility lesion in this, this case uh, shows strong and diffuse nuclear and cytoplasmic P16 staining of the lower uh, two third of the lower two third of the epithelium. This is uh, immunohistochemical marker that we are used the most in uh, these preoneoplastic lesions. Uh, so, also high seal uh, shows these plastic, these plastic cells that lacking maturation throughout all layers associated with atypical parakeratosis and prominent, uh, the prominent syncytial growth in basal uh, cells uh, and also brisk mitotic activity, uh, which uh, is uh, here we can see uh, some uh, atypical mitosis. Okay, uh, so uh, immunohistochemistry is very important uh, for uh, diagnosis and for differentiation, uh, low seal from high seal, and this is uh, some markers that we are using the most. P16 protein, uh, as I mentioned before, is a surrogate marker for HPV infection uh, and is always overexpressed in cervical cancer and precursor lesions, which are associated with high-risk uh, HPV subtypes, and typically shows a strong uh, and diffuse nuclear and cytoplasmic immunostaining in high seal involving two-thirds or a full thickness uh, of squamous epithelia uh, in the majority of lesions, and a proliferation marker uh, key, uh, 67 or MID1, immunoreactivity is present in the nuclei uh, of the upper of the upper two third uh, of the epithelium in high seal. So also here is uh, the difference between normal epithelia and uh, affected epithelium. Uh, so uh, this also markers key 67 and P60 uh, have been used as I said, and these proteins that are regulated in these this plastic cervical epithelial cells. Uh, to the action uh, of the integration of the real genes C6 and D7 into the host genome. And also P16 improves accuracy of detecting uh, cervical intraepithelial neoplasia too compared with a uh, uh, high risk HPV testing in the triage of women with uh, ASCUS. Uh, so in histology and cytology, P16 and also K67 are sensitive markers for dysplastic squamous and atypical glandular cells of the cervix, and the combination of both as a dual stain uh, may be uh, specific. So uh, squamous cell carcinoma uh, is the most common 
type of carcinoma of the cervix and although previously uh, accounting more than 90% of all cervical cancer, the overall frequency has decreased due to implementation and success of national cervical smear screening programs. Uh, so this has also resulted in the detection of otherwise asymptomatic small early invasive lesions, which offers the possibility of conservative management due to the negligible but not absent risk of metastasis. Uh, so uh, clinical features of uh, um, some carcinoma, uh, we have a superficially invasive squamous cell carcinoma, uh, which the earliest stage of the genesis uh, of an invasive cancer uh, and maximum depth of this carcinoma is 5 milliliter, maximum wide 7 millimeters. And invasive squamous cell carcinoma, a lesion of which epithelial formation invades underlying stroma by infiltration or destruction. Uh, so the symptoms uh, of um, this carcinoma uh, this carcinoma is present most commonly with postcoital or intermenstrual bleeding uh, with growth to uh, parametria into parametria and involving a uterus, uh, obstructive uropathy, and ren uh, cause also renal failure. Pain is usually indicative of pelvic wall of lumbosacral nerve root invasion and uh, in advanced stages, uh, hematuria. Also, rectal breathing or constipation indicates bladder or rectal involvement. Uh, colposcopic features of squamous cell carcinoma are also important. So superficially invasive squamous cell carcinoma may have this colposcopic appearance that is very similar to high squamous in, uh, intrapithelial lesions, these punctations and also mosaicism. So the presence of also atypical vessel is highly suggestive of early invasion. Uh, so the atypical vessels, they run parallel to the surface and often have irregular shapes such as the spirals and commas. Uh, so a superficially invasive carcinoma of the cervix appears, appears as a raised a red granular lesion of a colposcopic, on colposcopic view. Uh, more advanced tumors tend to be exophytic. Uh, in the ectus cervix, uh, commonly uh, we have this um, uh, exophytic uh, formation, but tumors confined to the endocervical canal, they are more commonly endophytic and result in a barrel shaped uh, expansion of the cervix. So here we have these colposcopic images that show uh, these uh, um, atypical vessels and also uh, a raised granulated red. Uh, mucosa, also here we can see. Uh, so, a very similar uh, appearance, colposcopic appearance in uh, high seal lesions and in squamous cell uh, carcinoma. The gross findings uh, uh, are in, as I said, in squamous cell carcinoma, in uh, endocervical canal, we have mostly uh, these. Um, of exophytic parietal polypoid uh, tumors, uh, and um, with they can in uh, endocervix they can uh, infiltrate the cervical wall, uh, which uh, result with this barrel shaped uterus. So um, we can also divide squamous cell carcinoma uh, on some subtypes and variants, and we have a large cell non keratinizing, which is the most common. A carcinoma, and in this carcinoma, we have lacks of keratin pearls, but uh, we can have some individually keratinized individual cells, and also keratinizing uh, carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma. Uh, it requires the presence of keratin pearl formation. What are keratin pearl formation? This is uh, pearls that are composed of nest of squamous cells uh, that are uh, cons uh, that are arranged in concentric. Um, uh, circles and uh, surrounding uh, uh, with surrounding central uh, acellular keratin. So these are some variants of uh, squamous cell carcinoma, which can be basally varicose, warty, papillary, uh, clamotransitional lymphoepithelioma like carcinoma. Uh, this is uh, an uh, histological uh, section of an uh, early invasive squamous cell carcinoma. Uh, what is uh, significant for this carcinoma, at the base of the crypts, we have 
focal prominent stromal reaction and in the background we can see a small we can see also a extensive high seal uh, that involving this endocervical glands and also here on this uh, on the uh, high power we can see this small uh, irregular malignant uh, epithelial cells and nest that invading stroma uh, this is also uh, as we mentioned some characteristic of superficially invasive squamous cell carcinoma which can be uh, seen here so also one very important and useful diagnostic clue uh, in uh, these carcinomas is the presence of uh, all, always desmoplastic stroma edema and marked uh, chronic inflammation that we can see here. Uh, so this is uh, invasive squamous cell carcinoma uh, in um, uh, either can be non-keratinizing or keratinizing uh, carcinoma. Uh, in non-keratinizing, uh, we can see uh, a lot of, of this uh, moderate amount of uh, cells with eosinophilic cy cytoplasm and uh, lack of keratinization. And in keratinizing, uh, is defined by the presence of keratin pros. Here we can see some keratin pros, squamous cells arranged in these concentric cycles, uh, which surrounds this uh, acellular uh, keratin. Okay. okay, features of squamous cell carcinoma are some uh, here, uh, round cell to oval cells, also uh, in keratinizing uh, cells arranged in this syncytial aggregates, uh, which indicates uh, cell boundaries and single cells and clusters which dense, with densely eosinophilic uh, cytoplasm. So uh, here is some um, cytological slides of uh, squamous cell carcinoma, in this case keratinizing, uh, which these cells uh, show keratinization. Uh, in the background here, we can see uh, also tumor diathesis, which is significant and one of the most important diagnostic clue in cytological samples uh, in a pap smear, and also a group of malignant uh, here non-keratinizing squamous cells that show prominent nuclear lie and uh, also in the background tumor this diathesis. Uh, this is uh, some uh, cytological samples on non-keratinizing uh, squamous cell carcinoma. Uh, we can see here the cells in large cells with high nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio and uh, nuclei show this irregular chromatin distribution, irregular membranes, and often prominent, prominent uh, single, prominent single or multiple multiply nuclear line. Uh, uh, here for uh, classification uh, of uh, um, uh, cervical cancer, we are using this TNM uh, classification and also uh, PIGO classification, Federation uh, International Diagnostic. Uh, this is one French uh, term, uh, which is also harmonized with um, this uh, TNM classification. Here are, here are some stages of the cervical cancer. We can see stage early stage 1B, uh, late stage, and 3B. So a uh, grading uh, of squamous cell carcinoma of the cervix. Cervix, it has uh, also uh, a poor clinical correlation. Uh, what means grading of squamous cells? It means uh, the, that uh, we uh, this is based actually on a, a cell and nuclear features. And regarding this, uh, we divide this into well differentiated tumor, uh, moderately differentiated, and poorly differentiated uh, to squamous cell carcinomas. But uh, it has, as I said, poor clinical co correlation. Uh, immunohistochemistry that we are using uh, for uh, in diagnosis of cervical carcinoma is P16 and P63, uh, which is excellent marker of squamous cell carcinoma and express and its expression highly correlates with HPV16. 
In a differential diagnosis of cervical carcinoma, we always have to think about squamous metaplasia with extensive glandular involvement, which is also very common. Uh, post biopsy in trapped squamous epithelia marked desodelizide de de reaction plus central site nodule, clear cell adenocarcinoma, and also small cell neuroendocrine carcinoma, especially in non, uh, non uh, in large cell uh, squamous cell carcinoma. Diagnosis of cervical cancer can only be made on the basis of uh, histology. Prognosis, for prognosis, the stage is the most important determinant of outcome, also size, depth of invasion, lymphovascular involvement, direct spread to parametrium peasants, uh, and the number of lymph node metastases are all adverse prognostic factors, and frequency of distant metastases increased with stage. Treatment, uh, um, treatment we can use cone biopsy for selected stage uh, 1A tumor, radiotherapy or surgery for early invasive tumors 1B or uh, 2A, combined radiation and chemotherapy for advanced tumors, and the entire medical records of which patient uh, with proven cancer of the cervix must be presented before the first treatment on gynecological oncology consult. So, multidisciplinary uh, gynecological oncological consulars are, that are made up by internist oncological and pathologists are necessary. Uh, prevention of uh, cervical cancer, uh, it, um, uh, it means uh, the screening programs, educative programs, and vaccination. Uh, the SOVE program, this is program that was, uh, that is in use in Slovenia. Uh, it means uh, early detection of cervical cancer. Is a national program that was established in 2003 and is the one of the oldest screening cancer program in Slovenia. The screening policy actually follows the recommendation of the European Council uh, on Cancer Screening and European Quality Assurance Guidelines in the screening for cervical uh, cancer. Uh, the most important part of the screening uh, examination uh, is the cervical smears for cytological examination. So, this cervical cytology is still the most important test for screen, uh, for screening uh, for cervical cancer. And since, since uh, 1960, cytology has been used worldwide as the primary screening method for cervical cancer. Uh, the conventional slide in combination with staining and morphological parameters described by det in detail by uh, George Papa Nicolau has set the standards for many years. And in the last decennium, uh, one of the major changes in cytology also has been adaptation of liquid based uh, cytology. We also uh, used uh, this HPV triage test, so indications uh, for. Uh, intervention uh, indications are ASCUS, uh, which means atypical uh, squamous, uh, squamous. This is actually indications for HPV triage test. Uh, atypical squamous cells of uh, undetermined, atypical glandular cells uh, undefined, uh, low still uh, more or 35 years old. Uh, in older women, histopathologically confirmed low seal, including cervical intraepithelial neoplasia one, and histopathology uh, confirmed a high seal and um, cervical cancer after treatment. These are uh, indications for uh, HPV uh, triage test. Colposcopy also is very important. This is some indication for a colposcopy. Uh, atypical cells in cytology, positive triage, HPV test, cervical intraepithelial neoplasia, macroscopically suspicious changes in the cervix, undefined bleeding and bleeding, uh, bleedings of the coital, and a recurrent vaginal inflammation. Uh, in Slovenia, vaccination has been carried out since 2009, and this is prophylactic vaccination of 12 year old girls as a part of a national vaccination program also. So a worldwide cancer of the cervix is one of the most common malignancies in women. 
and many epidemiological and clinical pathological studies have demonstrated that HPV is associated with the development of intraepithelial cervical lesions and the mechanisms by which it affects the carcinogenetic sequences that are still being carefully investigated. So, if prevention strategies can be implemented in developing countries, many thousands of lives could be saved. Thank you very much.